Hello, Mr. Barton here, and welcome to another episode of the GCSE Maths Question of the Week, where every week I try my best to pick you out a beautiful maths question that's going to help you prepare as best as you possibly can for the demands of your GCSE Maths exam. Now, all the questions that I look at have been kindly provided for my Diagnostic Questions website by AQA, OCR and Edexcel, so all the big names, and I pick them based on two criteria. Either A, they are brand new content to your GCSE maths exam, or B, students are having a bit of a nightmare with them on the diagnostic questions website. And that is certainly the case with this question we're going to look at today. Students, oh, they are going wrong left, right and centre. So hopefully this video will help put you on the right track. So let's take a look at it. It's been written by Edexcel and it goes like this, the histogram. Now, I know it's a bit obvious to highlight that word there, but it always helps just get you in the right frame of mind of thinking what statistical diagram this is. And I flipping love a histogram, so I'm very happy with this question. Shows the length in time in hours that some adults watch TV last week. I always like to highlight exactly what the diagrams are representing. Again, it just starts to get that picture in my head, so I'm thinking along the right lines. Here's the question. How many adults watch between 10 and 15 hours? Right, before we dive in, let's tackle the big thing on everybody's lips. What the flipping heck is a histogram? Well, a histogram is kind of like a bar chart or a frequency diagram, but with one subtle but crucial difference. And it's this bit here. On the y-axis, we're not measuring frequency or total like we would on a bar chart. We're measuring frequency density. And once you get that in your head, that explains one of the golden rules of histograms. There's two golden rules. This is one of them. And it's this. The area of a bar is equal to, do you know it? The frequency of that group. So the area of a bar tells you the frequency, not the height of the bar, the area. Get that remembered. Now, once you remember that, this question becomes a bit of a walk in the park. So let's return to the question. How many adults watch between 10 and 15 hours? So that's that group there, okay? So all we need to do is work out the area of that bar. So let's, let me do a quick sketch of the bar here. So there's me bar. And what's my base of the bar? Well, it goes from 10 to 15, so I reckon that's got a base of five. What's my height of the bar? Well, I can see it there marked on my axes. It's got a height of eight. And to get the area, I need to do five times eight. And last time I checked that, the answer was 40. And that's my answer. My area of the bar is the frequency. 40, is that one of my options? Yay, there it is there, 40. So I'm sorted. But wait a minute. Before you think, oh, I'll knock off earlier, have a cup of tea, just wait because we learn so much if we think, where do these wrong answers come from? Because if we can identify the wrong answers, it reduces the chance of us making those mistakes in the future. So where does four come from? Why might somebody say four? Well, four is the number of squares that are involved in this bar. Four tells you the number of squares. Now, the problem is, that doesn't tell you about area. It tells you that there's four squares, but those squares don't measure one by one. They measure five across the bottom and two going up. So they're not unit squares. So I can't simply count my squares to get the area. I've got to actually physically work out the area. Okay, so that's that one sorted. What about C? Where would eight come from? Well, eight is your classic. Eight is your height of this bar. Eight is your frequency density. But people look at it, just read the y-axis and think, oh, I've got my answer there. But no, that works for a bar chart, not for a histogram. What about D? D's an interesting one. Not enough information. Why, why would students think that? Well, I reckon students are muddling up pie charts and histograms, which seems a weird thing. So they look nothing like each other. But when you've got a pie chart, it doesn't mention frequency on a pie chart. So you can't actually work out the frequency of any of the segments on a pie chart unless you've got some more information. Well, it's kind of a similar thing here. There's no mention of frequency on this histogram. So you might be thinking, well, if it doesn't say frequency, I can't work out how many adults. But of course you can, as long as you know how to work with frequency density and areas. So I reckon students are muddling up pie charts to end up with that answer. Now, just before you go, I love to challenge students to come up with an alternate wrong answer, because again, this really gets you thinking deeply about the question. So what else would you go for here? 
Well, I'm tempted to go for this 1.6. Now, why the flipping X are you going for 1.6, I hear you say? Can you see where 1.6 would come from? Well, this comes from the other golden rule of histograms, and that's this. Frequency density equals, repeat after me, frequency divided by the width of the group or class width, some people like to say. Now, if you've got that in your head, and you should have it in your head because it's an absolutely key rule, there's a danger that if that's the only thing you know about histograms, you'll say, okay, what's the frequency of my group? Eight. What's the width of my group? Well, it goes from 10 to 15, so it's five. Get me calculator out. What's eight divided by five? 1.6. And before you know it, and before you've read the question, you've ended up with that as your answer. So, my strong advice is, may, by all means, make sure you know that rule, but definitely, definitely, definitely get this rule learnt as well. Because for interpreting histograms, it is absolutely fundamental. Okay, so here's my advice to you. Go on now on Diagnostic Questions and try the rest of this quiz out. Whatever exam board you're doing, because it'll test your statistical knowledge to the absolute limit and allow you to isolate any areas of weakness you've got. And if you still need some help, then hop on Mr. Bart Math. You know you'll find videos, worksheets, all that kind of stuff on there. Okay, and I'll see you for a fresh question of the week next week. Take care. Bye for now.